I've always been one of the guys that was like, I want my helmet design to stay the same so that people know it's you. Okay. Right? Some drivers like change it up all the time. Like Joseph's has changed a hundred times and Alex Tagliani used to have a different design every weekend and whatever, whatever. But guys like Dario were always my kind of, I looked up to him in that sense because his helmets looked the same back to like 1992. Like Dixon. Like Dixon. Dixon changed the color a couple times, but the design was the same. I've, I've done some of the color stuff in the past, try to keep the design similar. So was that like intentionally what you So were? I keep the designs the same all the time. But it's the color that- But I, so sometimes I go crazy with the colors, sometimes I don't. For example, like this year, compared to my, what well, my last year's, last year's summer was more white. Okay. This year it's all, it's I, I left, instead of all the white, it's bare carbon from the show. Okay. Oh, interesting. So it looks more stealth, Okay. same design though. Um, have you have you had the same helmet painter like your whole career? Um, since twenty fifteen, so okay. seven years. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. long time. All right, so this is. I, I want to see your. I, I, I want to see what you think of it. So you, I've never. So I've never okay, done three D chrome on a helmet. Three D chrome. Three D chrome. What made you decide this year? I'm going bananas for the five hundred with the helmet design. So I I came up with the idea. I was like, oh my god, that must be super cool. But I didn't know that we could actually do it on a helmet. So I got with the designer and said, make something and let's choose from five or six different ones. Uh -huh. And then we'll send it to the painter and see if he doesn't whine about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which he inevitably did, but Probably, you were yeah. like, he's like, okay, yeah, fine, I did I'll like do it. 40 or 50 hours on it. Are you serious? Is this was an expensive of, helmet yes, design. <laughs> yes. So you worked with the designer before you got so it. So the, the designer and then the painter, yes. The painter wouldn't have done this like this. There's no way. But I told him, stop whining and do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. But I think he loves it. I think he does. He's proud of it. It's cool. Man. Okay, here we go. This is cool. The 3D, this is really cool. Yeah. The 3D bricks, chrome. It's loud. I mean, it is and it isn't. Like it's loud, but I feel like it flows. It flows. It's still you can tell it's yours. That's what I like. About yeah. It, right. It's yeah. still. It's that's what I want. It. I'm still gonna be like, yeah, that's Potter. No, no problem. No yeah. question. What I like about it is like there's detail up close. Like this is all the Indy 500 logo in here, but from a distance, it just kind of looks like it's white like or a wallpaper. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But up close, like seeing all this, the detail on the uh, on the chrome and the the bricks there, that is really cool. How did you design? How did you come up with the design? Like so, the general design. So he was like, what do you want to do with it? And I was like, I don't know. Um, I want something that represents, like, I want something that when, when people think of indie, I, yeah. want it to, I want the helmet to represent that. Okay, so, yeah. And I feel like when you say bricks, it's I'm, just, it's very, it's brick themed. Right. right. So you can see the bricks here. You can feel it on the side, and that's the thing. Yeah, they're they're raised, right? Like, yeah. it's, a, it's like a textured helmet. And then I wanted the 500 logo somewhere. Right. And it was gonna go right in inside of the. So this is so when you look at it from this way, this yeah. is a P. A oh a yeah, P. yeah okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. It always goes in here. Okay. But I was like, nah, I don't want it in there. So we just did the white as a wallpaper. Right. And the white's matte. Yeah. The orange is matte. Orange. And this is obviously chrome. The orange. Oh, dude, that's so cool. Yeah. I didn't even notice that before. The five hundred with the bricks in it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I I really like it. The Pato logo in the spec gold. You know what sucks though is you do something like this, and you and you love it like it's so cool, but you're like I can only use it for one race. But I think that's what makes it special. I, I agree, but like when you like shelf you like, it, you're like oh. But are you gonna be like okay maybe I'll do something like in this color scheme maybe for the next helmet maybe not have the bridge. Uh, like the so I've always tried to keep mine with green and red right in there because of the flag. Yeah. Um, but for my special ones, I always like to change it. And and I wanted to do something like the car for it to like match with the car. I had no idea that we were gonna have that green on the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was a surprise. Yeah. But I still think it it meshes well. Yeah. Like you see the blue. And this it, is darker than the baby blue, but I think right. it still goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like the the super bright orange. And the green's um, not like the all white the goes with anything, everything. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you, so your design always stays the same, the colors change, but how did you come up with your like original helmet like design? Idea? So what I told, what I told it, I said, I want a lot of space for sponsors. Okay. And so how long ago did you design this, so this general design? So I started using this design in 2020. And I've oh, okay. It, and I will keep it forever. Okay. 
So uh, you were so that was like so start of IndyCar basically. Start of IndyCar. Okay, so junior categories. Yes. So well, I did. I, so he tidied it up. Okay. So I I my, my 2018, 2019, 2017, 2016. Uh, he, actually, even 2015. Okay. So they all had the P. Yeah. But he cleaned it up, and he made it look more stealth from the front. Okay. Um, and it, it, he basically made it look just better and easier for logos to be looked at. Right. Right. And I love it. Like I, as soon as he sent me the design, I was like, "Don't change it. I love it. This is really cool. I really like the blue orange color combo. It's loud, but not not like it." it it's not like it. It's, it, like it, in your it's face. not rattly. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it just. I think it flows. Did you like when you were a kid? Did you used to like sit in school and paint, like like draw helmet designs? So, or like... so the ones that I so. What did I do? So I, I designed one of my first helmets, uh, or when I was a kid, I just sit and I'd start painting them, and I'd send it to the painter. I want something like this. They weren't the best designs, <laughs> but that's what I used. Do you still have like all your old helmets? All of them. Every single one. Um, like man, in twenty twenty, I used ten, and I had to give away. What? I, had to, I gave away six to like sponsors, like sponsors or like and team owners and everything. Because they they just came and they're like, I'm taking your helmet. And I was like, you can't say no. Yeah, that's fair. So I was like, okay, get another ten, one. Ten helmets. Yeah, it was not. It wasn't cheap. No, and that's uh, that's even with an aero screen. Like back in the yeah. day, we go through like. Four, five, maybe six. Because yeah. you're getting beat up all yeah. the time. Now you can run one all year. Doesn't sweat too bad. It's two is bad. good. Yeah, right. two perfect. But I like to do. I, I like to do select race, like my Texas special this year. Yeah, was for really sure. cool. Yeah. Um, so that one was not, no blue, but it had the orange and the right. black, and um, I, I really like that. <laughs> it turned out great. It, it turned out great. really cool. It turned great. Very different. I love I'm excited that it looks very different to any other ones that I've used. But it's still it's fine. But it's still me. So Texas is kind of like a home race for you because you how give me your story. Born in Mexico. Born in Monterey, Mexico. Okay. Uh, for the first 11 years of my life. Okay. So yeah, you grew up in Mexico. Yeah. And then moved to Texas when I was around 11, 12 ish. Okay. Um, and so that would have been 2011, 2012. <laughs> then did school there. And, and then in, in 17 uh, and 18, I was still there, but in Dallas rather than San Antonio. Okay. Because my sister went to SMU and she was at SMU and my parents wanted to be closer to her. Okay. So the whole the family, the family, I guess, uh, moved. And for me, I think it meshed well with how my year was insane in 19 because Dallas is a really good hub. For sure, flying go around. Go to Japan, go to Europe, go yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, So that made it a lot easier. So that was like my home touching. Did you start racing in Mexico? Like when did you start karting? Uh, 2005. Give me ages. I don't know, I can not do that math. Six, six. Six, six years old. In Monterey. In Monterey. And then, so six years old, Monterey. Seven years old, still in Monterey. Eight years old, first race, Florida winner tour. Oh, okay, so you started traveling to the States yes, when you're still living in Mexico. Europe. In Europe, karting yes. at eight years old. At eight, nice. And nine, and ten, and eleven, and twelve, and then in thirteen, so I moved to cars. And by, by that point, you're already living in Texas. <clears throat> yes. And what, what was the first car you drove? Uh, a Speeds GSXR 1000. What the hell is that? Like they don't. I didn't race it. I didn't race it. Oh. I, I, it was like a, so. It was a car that my grandfather had. Okay. Um. And it has a, a Suzuki GSXR 1000 engine on yeah. it. Sounds really cool. For sure. And I mean, it's it's a two chassis, uh, fiberglass bodywork, but it's a very pretty good looking car. Yeah. Um, so I tested in that. So I learned in that. Right. And then I went to Formula BMW. Yeah. I didn't race, but I tested in it. Okay. Uh, because it Formula by, it by wasn't that, already, it wasn't around it was anymore. dead here yeah. already. Um, learned how to do like sequentials and that, and then I raced in uh, Pacific F2000. Okay. Uh, so did that. So like a regional raced version that, of yes. the US F2000 yes. series. Yeah. Raced that. Uh, then I did Formula Renault 1.6 in Europe. Okay. I only did a few races, then they didn't want to let me race because of my age. Because I was 14. Oh, okay. 13 or 14. Uh, so they're like, yeah, you. If you were 13, young. I kind of sucked them, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Too young. <laughs> 
Uh, then I came back to the States. Right. Because uh, there was a good opportunity with Pelfrey. Team yeah. Pelfrey. Yeah. Uh, so they pro Mazda with them. 15. Won that? No. Uh, sixth, fifth in the okay. championship. Uh, and then next year, second. Okay. Uh, and then Lights. seven. No. So in 17, I didn't win the championship, so I didn't get the bump up to Indy Lights. Right. And I got a ride in IMSA. With the, oh, the yeah. You were doing a, yeah, the performance deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Did that uh, for the whole year. Easiest year I've ever done in my life. Because it's just so easy. Like, just travel. So and the, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, it's just. It, like it's the atmosphere it's just different yeah it's very to me it was just so laid back and very, very different to what like the indie car weekends are like and to what europe is like did you enjoy it or i loved it you loved that it i loved it back. but it was, it was i don't want to sound like a tool but too easy like it was like yeah, man, yeah. it's not even a challenge yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 level I like of competition to, yeah i, I like sure. to, to i like to get challenged yeah, yeah so then i did lights but when i with when i did the lights i said if i'm gonna do this it has to be with a proper testing program and it has to be with a proper team because you don't I went into every money. single season and I didn't test nothing. Like I never had a proper chance to have like a championship run and I said if I'm going to do this, it, it has to be good. And Michael gave me a really, really good offer for Indy Lights. Yeah. Uh, teammates with Colton. Teammates with Colton. I won the championship. Uh, got then was supposedly going to have a full ride in IndyCar. Carla, right? Uh, uh, no. So with Harding Steinbrenner. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you Mike Harding like... promised everything and uh, didn't live up to any of it. Because you, you and Colton both did an IndyCar race at the end of that year, right? Your last yes. year. You did yes. Sonoma. Sonoma. Yeah, which went really well. Dude, you were in the Fast 6 in qualifying. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. That was that went really well. Um, that's I mean that's a big deal. Like your first indie car race, yeah, thrown together last race of the season. You you just finished your lights championship. Like all right, we're just gonna throw you guys in here for a race because we know we want to do this next year. You go, you throw. What was that? What was that like? What now, do you remember from that first? So I, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what all the buttons did. Yeah. I mean, I I had no idea. Yeah. But I just, man, I just went out and drove drove it like just pushed 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 <laughs> and then they're like oh uh, we're through it's like wait what really because i was i mean i was trashing blacks and then we put reds on um and for some reason i've always struggled with blacks always i don't know why but i've always been i've, I've always felt really comfortable with the soft tire okay with, with how much you can get away with it and how aggressive and how you can hustle the car. I mean, yeah. you know what it's like, the difference. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I was really quick in reds. <laughs> so ultimately, that's what transferred us. Like, right. if we would have been on black pace, yeah. I would have been in black. How, how'd the race go? Um, so i would never done, like, proper pit stops right. in laps. And I, I'm like, man, I, I mean, I, I was like, well, save me some fuel. I was like, okay. I mean, I was just... I was switching out to whatever they were telling me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I destroyed my tires for the first spin. Um, then went into the pit stops, lost about a bunch of positions, uh, made them back, uh, but not enough to get back to fifth. Uh, I ended ninth. That's still a but pretty stout decent. debut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that. Uh, super fun. Like, you know, we're ready for 2019. And then, like, man, February hits and. Uh, and I leave the team because they weren't gonna run me. Like there wasn't, there wasn't even one car prepared, and I knew, yeah. I knew that one car was gonna be for Colton. It wasn't gonna be for me. Right. Um, so, so I, I asked for my, for my release. It took us weeks, uh, but finally got it. And but it was too late to start the season. To find uh, I did a few races with Carlin, where, I mean. I think we had some good qualifyings here and there. That like the speed was there, but it just the execution was was just in, in every race. There was always a mistake, and there was always something going wrong, which was really frustrating. Um, and then Red Bull decided to ship me off to Japan yep. because I was part of their program. Uh, did that, and what not? What not a lot of so whenever I got signed to Red Bull, yeah. That contract was a Formula One contract. It wasn't for anything else. Okay. 
the FIA decided not to count my Indy Lights points as they are valid. So the process took months of trying to get it. And we got to the point where then the FIA was like, well, no, we're not going to count your Indy Lights points. Um, so Red Bull and I were both kind of like, now what? Like, they can't use me for what they need me for. And I need to go make myself a living. Right. Like, so that, that must have been hard. Like, was, was, Man, it was so stressful. Was the contract to actually race in F1, or was it starting as a tester, or race simulator, or straight to what? Straight to, to, to Toro Rosso that year. No, for 2019. Yeah. And because of the super and license super points. Life, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it sucked. And so you had to just walk away from that and figure like, something else what, out. What do you do? Yeah. Um, and credit to you, though, because it would be so easy in that position to be like, well, I'm this close. I gotta figure it out. If I miss a year, or whatever, like, but yeah. that opportunity might not be there in a year. Exactly. That seat might go. Well, up. then that's what we got to. Then it's like, well, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't confirm a seat for the for 2020. 20, well, no, for 21, because I would have to get the points for in 2020. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Like, let's. Thanks, but no thanks. No, but I was, and, and they said it's your future. Like, yeah. Like, you make the decision, and I was like, let's just go our separate ways, and maybe we circle back yeah, maybe in the we'll future. One day. Uh, so, I, honestly, it was, I know a lot of people talk uh, about Helmut being so harsh, and yeah, he Marco is one of the most true and honest people yeah. that I've ever had to deal with. Right. And I, and I, he's one of the guys that I respect the most in racing, because he never, he never talked, like... BS. He's a straight shooter. Yeah. yeah. This is what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, and he did it. He's he's run Red Bull's driver development exactly. program from the beginning, right? So he's dealt with a lot and of he drivers. Calls the shots. And yeah. He knows he like he calls the shots. He's the one that finds the Sebastian Vettels and the the Max Verstappen yeah. and the Pato Awards. Like that's his role. Exactly. And yeah, some people find him tough to work with, but I, I actually just, really enjoyed working with him because yeah. I'm very direct right. as well, and we just, we got along really well. Uh, but we both said like. We got to the point where it was out of our control. Right. Like it was, we just we couldn't do it because of someone else not trying to give us or not willing to give us the the license. So, uh, so then that went away, and and Zach had been had been on me kind of like, hey, like you know, would you like to come to IndyCar? And right when I got released, I called him and I said, man, I'm released. Um, Let's go. Do you, have a, do you have do you have a seat? And and then that all came about, but. At the po- like man, at the point where that happens, I was risking it. Like, oh, here we go again, yeah. nineteen again. It's so crazy though to be like, you know, you spend your whole life trying to get to somewhere. You were that close to getting to that point, and it all just sort of dissolves in front of you for such a BS reason. Like, it's such a dumb yeah, because it's like it's not like I've sh- it's not like I've shown. It's not like they put you in a car and didn't perform. Yeah, and whatever. Like the point yeah. I got signed is because they tested me from the one car. Right. Like, you would think someone like Red Bull wouldn't just. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But I guess politics. Yeah, FIA does what's, what they want, what they want to do, right? So, door closes, window opens. You end up driving for McLaren and IndyCar. Strong first year, <laughs> but let's let's skip all the way to 21. Genuine championship contender. You get that first win at home, essentially. Do you mm-hmm. consider Mexico home? Or do you consider Texas home? Uh, Mexico. Mexico is home. So home yeah. away from home. Yeah. I, I mean, I really want to race in Mexico. Dude, we used to race in Mexico. I'm, it was awesome. I'm pushing hard it was to get back. Awesome. There. Mexico like, City or Monterey? I don't care. Because Monterey's got a track. Whichever. The problem is that there's a lot of money that has to go into it because it's now a, like a state park. Right. And there's a lot of money that has to go into like getting it race ready. Yeah. Um, so but probably that was a nice F1 track. But man, imagine like a street, street. Co- like a street course in like Cancun. Oh, dude, that'd be amazing. That'd be sick. Come on, you're, you're Mr. Mexico, man. You're the star of the show now. I'm trying, man. <laughs> I'm trying. All right, so you get that first win. Genuine championship contender. Doesn't pan out the way. I mean, we, you go into the last race with still an outside shot. You get hit on the first lap. So you kind of know it's done. Yeah. How disappointing was the end of that season for you? Like, when you're three quarters of the way through the season, you're right up there in points. At that point, were you like, "This is this is ours. We can do this," or were you like, "I'm I'm not surprised out here, but like, 
I don't know if, I don't know, I'm not sure if we can close this out. Like, did you have the confidence in yourself and the team that you were gonna, that you could do it? And it just didn't fall that I way? I knew that we could do it, but I knew that it was gonna be really hard because we were going up against, you know, against Ganassi and Vensky. That have won like, a million championships. Like whether, even if I did my job perfectly, everyone, like everyone has to do their job perfectly in order to pull it off. Absolutely perfect. And we didn't lose a championship in Long Beach. We lost it. For sure during the, the year sure. and I was bummed I was pissed um, but at the end of the day I was like there's literally nothing I could have done yeah what does Pato do for fun? Ooh, what are your hobbies? so I love spending time at the beach uh, I who, love like who does it? jet skiing yeah I like water sports okay do you like, like the water jet, ski wakeboard yes. all that stuff I, I don't do it as much anymore because I my, oh. I, I, I got my knee in, like when I went to camp one one year when I was a kid I, I was wakeboarding and I got my knee pretty bad okay um, so I stay work. away from it but I, I do like jet skiing I like to do the the jet pack like on your feet and you like oh that like water oh yeah. no way I've always wanted to try it's that super cool it's hard yeah it's it looks cool, it looks fall it hurts yeah <laughs> fall from 40 yeah feet you gotta break the water yeah, yeah. Um, I really I love their bikes Ah, are a big you, Supercross fan. Are you allowed to dirt bike? No, mm. I'm not allowed to, um, but I'm a big fan. Like when I was a kid, when I was karting and everything, um, I dirt bike every day. Really? Every day. Um, so you follow Supercross closely? and uh, Not as closely as I wish now. You're busy. Because of, you know, being really busy, but I, uh, I love watching it. Yeah. And I think those are the gnarliest guys that live in this earth. I think they are insane. They're, yeah, unbelievable. Like, I think that is the hardest sport in the world. Uh, yeah, and then after that, I'd probably say racing. I just think I because it's man plus machine, but those guys get beat up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I would say MotoGP, it's like Supercross, MotoGP. Yeah, but anything with a bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the Supercross and MotoGP guys, oh, different breed, man. People think we're nuts. I'm yeah, like, they no, think no, no, we're no. nuts, and I was like, I look at the MotoGP guy or Supercross, and I'm like, no, those guys yeah. are nuts. Yeah. We're off, but they're actually insane. Yeah, <laughs> they're insane. I think we're off. Yeah. But they're insane. Yeah. And. I, I just have really high respect for those guys. Um, what kind of music do you listen to? You an EDM guy? You gonna be you gonna be in the snake pit on? So uh, I want to go to snake pit, man. I want to go visit. I, I like I, I want to go and I want people to get pumped. I don't know if the problem is I don't know if all, if a lot of Indiana knows Pato. Right. So maybe like who, who, who's this guy? Uh, like why is like, he on stage with a suit on? You can be you can be modest, but like. Are you are you a big deal in Mexico? Yes. Okay. It's like Checo, you. Yes. We're the we are the, the, the two. Yeah. Everybody knows that you're here. You're doing. Not in 2020. This. You're winning but races. During last year. Well, yeah. It grew a lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's get Connor to take you to the snake pit this year <laughs> because that way the local boy who yeah. everyone in Indiana knows. Okay. Can introduce you to the Indiana crew, yeah. and then you'll grow a little bit in Indianapolis. Yeah. Did you notice, like, around the state? I guess around because you live in Indianapolis. Now. I have to say though, it is so cool to see so many five streets. Yeah. Walking around. For sure. Like for sure. We're part of like one of the coolest brands, right? I think in the sport. Like, yeah. McLaren does such a cool job on the F1 program, on their IndyCar program, the way they've tied those two together, I think is huge, it's, especially we see F1's popularity growing. What's the what's the coolest thing, being a McLaren driver, what's the coolest thing that you've got to do outside of anything like driving? Probably drive, the, drive any supercar you want. Yeah, they just, you just like call Zach up and be like, hey, I want a blue 720 today. Yeah. <laughs> it depends where, where we are market-wise. Like, you, we can't be in middle and be like, can I have a 720? <laughs> Uh, but the guys are really nice with, with, with us where like if we go to like LA uh, they'll hook us up with, with a car yeah. or uh, you have, like Miami Florida like anywhere where there's a big market uh, it's really cool because you live in Indianapolis right like you live in Indianapolis yeah. Uh yeah so I, I, I live I live here four five months out of the year okay not full year right because I think the winter is miserable uh, it's funny how all you guys that come from hot climates can't take the Indiana winter. I'm from Toronto, man. This is a mild, this is a warm winter. Toronto's insane. <laughs> In the winter, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Do you have a company car here? 
Uh, I don't. No? Well, I do. Um, sort of. So now your Chevy you car, yeah. You yeah. probably yeah. So we have the 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 Tahoes. Yeah. And uh, we have a 620Rs, Felix and I. Okay. Um, they're not ours, ours. Right. Like, yeah. The whole team can use them, but we're usually the only ones that use them. Right. But they're up in Taylor's house. And we, oh, convenient. Yeah. You know, we never use them. <laughs> so the boss keeps yeah. them at his house. Yeah. And you have to call him to go get it if you want it. He honestly, he's he he tells us all the time, like, man, come get it. We haven't driven them. Um, but man, he lives so far, <laughs> so I just never, I never, I'm like, I really have to drive 45 minutes to go get it, and then drive that back, right? get just my Tahoe, right. yeah, so I was like, eh. Not worth it. Yeah, but for the month of May, you'll probably see them, with, you'll probably see them around, you'll probably see some 720s around. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool <laughs> perk. It's a nice perk. Yeah, it's a really cool perk. I'm a big, I'm a big car guy. Yeah. I, uh, I enjoy supercars. What's your dream car? I mean, okay, let's say the McLarens don't exist on the road. Is he allowed to say a dream car? Uh, my Ferrari. Really? Good choice. Yeah, it's nice. If money was in an issue, my Ferrari. It is a but small man, issue. You want to get it right now that it's for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not making them, right? Like, there's only yeah. a. Yeah. And it's also like the maintenance one is like a jet. Like, it's like, if the batteries, if one battery goes wrong, it's like 380 grand. <laughs> no, it seems like a totally reasonable car. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to win a lot of championships in 500 years. <laughs> for, for me to even think of yeah. being able to buy one. Yeah, yeah, um, All right, so that's yeah. my dream car. That's your dream car. Okay. Yes. Let's, we'll get, you know, What's your dream one day. car? What's my dream car? It's a tough one, man. That's that's a good option. I mean, the three big ones, right? The, the P1, the LaFerrari, the Porsche 918. Oh, those are all. Such, I have to say, the best bang for your buck. For speed, 720s, McLaren. Okay. For everything, Porsche GT3 RS. I, yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. My, what a machine! It's such the a new one's coming out. Soon. Yeah, yeah. And then what's cool is it's still like it's it's a little understated compared to like a lot. I love Rory that or... because only someone that knows about cars be like, oh, it's a GT3 RS. But someone like this looks like a Porsche. Yeah, like you know, like, it's just a Porsche with a big wing. Okay. But the thing is crazy. So you win the Indy 500 this year. You get a nice bonus. What do you buy yourself as a? Do you buy yourself a a, a little gift for winning the race? Do you stash uh, it away for a rainy day? Do you invest it? What do you do for I'll you? Uh, I'm, uh, I'll probably take myself on a vacation. Vacation? I like that. Experiences yes. over material things. Yes, because, you know, I think that's priceless. Yeah. Like, um, like in the start of the year, I was just fed up with everything going on. And yeah. I said, I'm leaving. I'm going on a trip and I'm taking the boys. And we went to uh, Vallarta, Puerto Vallarta, Punta yeah, Mita. Yeah. I love Punta Mita. And I have, I have not had a trip like that. Like, you know, in a really long time or ever. So where would you go if Puta you want to rest? So you go back there? I, I di I'm dying to go to Maldives. Beautiful. I'm dying to go to Maldives. You, I need my honeymoon there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mega? Awesome. Insane. So Paradise. Insane. Like, yeah. yeah you see it hot out on the water yeah. and you're just... And go soon, because it's probably not going to be around very long. <laughs> Why? Because the oceans are going to bury it. <laughs> okay. That's my doomsday approach, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, I think you should do Maldives. You've done that, you've done the other place. I gotta go to Maldives. Make it a special trip. Yeah. Well, hey man, hope you make some memories here at the track. Thanks for making some memories in the Maldives. Best of luck. You can find me in the Maldives. <laughs> <laughs>